Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, it's also Labor Day. Yeah, okay. Um, it's funny, the old Soviet newspaper used to have two sayings at the top of it. Uh, workers of the world unite and you have nothing to lose but your chains. And I'm thinking, the second one fits with the church. You have nothing to lose but your chains to sin. Our opening so. hymn is 660, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. service begins on page 203 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, to God on high be glory and peace to all the earth, goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth, we praise and bless you, Father. You did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all. Grant us courage and strength to take up the cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good death and evil, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandment and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, Choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. This is the word of the Lord. 
The epistle is from Philemon. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. According, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Jesus Christ, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the, the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be compulsion, but of your own free will. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he was wronged you at all, if he has wronged you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it to say nothing of your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confidence of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stand. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now great crowds accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who seek it, see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. 
So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who at the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn is number 427, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Number 427. Peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Paul wrote to Philemon about Onesimus, I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion but of your own accord. That last sentence contrasts by compulsion with of your own accord. This verse was used by the church fathers to prove man has at least some free will, though they still maintained, as Paul did, that we are saved by grace, in other words, by God's action, not ours. 
But the church came up with two words to describe these two possibilities of why we do good things. They're contrition and attrition. Contrition is when you go, do good out of love for God. Attrition is when you do good out of fear of punishment. As a boy, I fought my mom about going to church practically every Sunday. One famous day, my sainted mother actually had to chase me through a field to catch me and haul me to church. That's a very clear example of attrition. <laughs> As a teenager, I would go to church even when my family didn't. That's a very clear example of contrition because I went because I wanted to go and receive God's grace. Attrition, giving in as a surrender to a greater force, mom or God, same difference, gave way to contrition. I wanted to go to God's house to get forgiveness. Attrition is considered spiritually inferior to contrition. Uh, we want you to come to church and partake in the sacraments because you want to come of your own accord to receive forgiveness for your sins, not because you feel forced to. That said, if I hadn't experienced attrition due to the force of my mom, I would have never gotten to contrition where I went to church with or without her because I wanted the forgiveness God gives in church. Attrition has its uses. God can work with attrition. You only coming to see him because you have to or are compelled by a parent works in saving you. Without being forced by compulsion to go to church, you can't get to the better part, contrition, where you come on your own accord, out of love, not from fear of punishment. The rubber really hits the road when you are graduated from high school and or go off to college. If you've made the switch from coming to church from compulsion to going to church because you want to, you will still attend church after being graduated. I went to the Ohio State University. Compulsion by the university and its staff to go to church on Sunday either none or it was actively discouraged by the godless profs. Number of students who went to church, hundreds. We went to our churches, we went to our friends' churches. We had friends we did this with and we had friends with which we did not. The Christian community of the Ohio State University was a coalition of the willing. Nobody was being forced to go. Now, Rome makes a big deal of attrition versus contrition, but our gospel today shows us a clear example of God finding it perfectly okay to start with attrition, which is compulsion to obey him. He's patient. He's willing to let you grow in your faith from compulsion to love. The example of attrition is one of war and surrender. Or what king? going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. That is peace through attrition, pure and simple. The other guy, God, has 20,000 soldiers. You only have 10,000. It's unlikely you would even have 10,000 soldiers in a contest with God, but even with the text given, a two-for-one a, a two for one advantage is huge. The lesson in that situation is just give up. Confess your sins. Ask how peace can be made. The answer you know is through Jesus Christ your Lord. The terms on the one hand are generous, to end the war, God kills his son. He does not kill you. But I gave you Luke 14, 31 to 32, but what of 33, the conclusion? So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. 
The terms of peace with the mightier king include more than the sacrifice of Jesus' body and blood, though that is the only reason why God makes peace with us. No, Jesus asks us for everything. Do you have a guardian angel? Maybe. But what I know of all of us have as a constant companion is our personal cross. Jesus' cross for us is relief. Our sin is paid for. We're off the hook for anything bad we ever did or will do because the price for all our evil has been paid already. Our personal cross gives no relief. It's nailed so tight to us that not even God will remove it from us, not even after making peace with us. See St. Paul's example. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong." The thorn in Paul's flesh was his irremovable cross that he had to bear his whole life. Paul naively asked God if he could be without a personal cross of burden and just glory in the relief of Jesus' cross. He asked this three times. If God can be compelled, Paul compelled him to reply, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. What does your personal cross do to you? It makes you humble. In a way, it makes you give up your proud designs. It takes all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, the very things God has been asking us for from the beginning of time. Are we capable of fully rendering those things of ours to him in this life? No. Hence Paul's irremovable thorn, our irremovable cross, that always keeps us held back this side of the grave. We lose our thorns and crosses on the other side of the grave in the resurrection. Attrition isn't all that bad. Telling God, I give up, go ahead and forgive me, results in the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins is what changes compulsion to of your own accord. Jesus went to the cross, took the biggest personal cross for his own, and died to kill the debt and guilt and any remembrance of our sins. If Jesus was compelled to save us, the compelling factor was his love for us. Jesus was compelled by our total inability to save ourselves to be the one who saves us with his blood. Why with his blood? God's own rules. There is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. See Leviticus in the Old Testament and Hebrews in the New. Just be glad we're in the New Testament. In the Old, every week I'd splatter you with the blood of the animals you brought me to kill. Some blood on the altar, the rest on you. There's one place where attrition or compulsion is out of place and simply unacceptable. At the communion rail. Carelessly taking the sacrament is bad enough. Only taking the sacrament because you're being forced to? Even worse, you probably sin against the body and blood of our Lord. Coming up to the rail is for the contrite. People who acknowledge their sin and failing and of their own accord come up to receive the holy washing in Christ's blood in, with, and under the wine. Compulsion to commune can be nothing but taking it without wanting the forgiveness and not recognizing the body and blood of Jesus. That's sinning against the body and blood of Jesus. In the Catechism, the sixth and last part is Holy Communion. It's at the end because it's where we really want the kids to understand what they are doing 
when they come up for what looks like only bread and only wine. They have to know it's more than that and that it gives the benefit of taking away their sin. If a woman who bled for 12 years could be healed by lightly brushing the tassel of Jesus' clothing, what then happens when we actually touch his true body and blood through faith? Our sins don't stand a chance against that or him. Careless communing can be tolerated for a while in the hopes that through learning and Bible study, the person comes to a knowledge of the truth and meaning of what eating that bread and drinking that wine are. The life of a person is in his or her blood. Attrition or compulsion may be necessary for a while, but only in preparation for contrition, doing good and asking for forgiveness freely out of love for God, our God who first loved us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, our King, you counted the terrible cost of our salvation and sent your Son to give life, his life on the cross. Inspire our hearts to trust fully in his sacrificial victory that we would follow in his way through death and into eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Shepherd, you give life to your church through your holy word. Grant that your people always to walk in your way and receive your blessings as they serve you in this world and in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you are our life and length of days, and you set before us your gift of life in your holy word. Preserve your institutions of marriage and family. Guard husbands and wives, parents and children, both from despising and from idolizing one another. Instead, let every relationship in the home exemplify your unconditional love for us in Christ and grant that all might follow him in their service to one another. Lord, in your mercy. Good Lord, preserve us from the ways of the wicked and prosper us in your paths. We commend to you all who bear office in our land and ask you to make them a blessing to those they serve. Grant to us every joy in the calling you have given us, that we might render service to you in our works of love toward our neighbor. Remember those in need of honest labor and daily bread, and give them gainful employment according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, give the strength of the Spirit to all who are suffering or in any kind of need, and especially to those we have been asked to remember, including Hope, Marge, Patty Ann, Sylvia, the family of Bernie Kroll who passed away this week, Levi, Judy, Robert, Paul, Pat, Reverend Jerry, Lois, Betty, and Christopher, that they may all have the courage and will to take up their crosses and follow the Savior through suffering into the joys of life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have set before us life and death, blessing and curse in your holy word. Now at the altar, through his own word, your Son sets before us his own body and blood. Grant that all who receive the sacrament today might do so with prepared and penitent hearts, rejoicing in your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation for the sake of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for an end to the hostilities in Ukraine. Uh, please end the bloodshed and the death. Uh, we also ask for a prevention of war in Taiwan. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve us, O Lord, from all temptation and grant us faith that we may rest all our prayers and the desires of our hearts in your merciful arms. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth the door, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord, truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world away. the forgiveness of all your sins. The service continues on page 211 with the Nuke Demitis. We stand.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Well, the flowers today are fantastically beautiful. Um, it was so nice. We had babies and toddlers today, so that's always nice to have the little ones here. Um, I believe we're still looking for prayer partners. Um, we're running out of time. Uh, so as soon as you can, if you think you're willing to be someone who just sort of secretly mentors a confirmand with little notes of encouragement and things like that, uh, please let us know in the office. Next Sunday is worship in the park. There will be no service in this sanctuary next Sunday. We will be at Menominee Park in shelter number one. Just look for the big crowd. That will be us. <laughs> um, the worship service is at 11, uh, lunch at noon. Main dish, coffee, water, and table service will be provided by a Thrivent Action Team grant. Optional to bring a side dish or dessert to share, lawn chair, beverage of choice. Bring your entire family and invite your friends. Flyers are available at the back to distribute to friends. Uh, choir will begin on September 14th at 6 p.m. Rehearsals last about an hour. Uh, no experience necessary. Contact Amy Johnson should you have any questions. Sunday school begins on Sunday, September 18th at 10.15 a.m. for ages three years old through eighth grade. There is a QR code in the weekly page with your cell phone camera. You can get the registration form. Um, otherwise, if you want to just get the paper form, it is available in the office from Lynn. Uh, altar flower sponsors are needed. As I said, the flowers today are fantastic. They cost $30, so they better look fantastic. Uh, <laughs> envelopes are by the flower chart at the welcome desk. Uh, at the school on Tuesday, September 6th at 5.30 p.m., instead of its normal time at 6, there is a PTL meeting at school. Um, and the more parents we can get involved in that, the better. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Our closing hymn is number 918, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, 918. Thank you. 